This is your USMNT Abroad weekly update from April 6th to April 12th of 2021. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, Tactical Manager. If you're older, hi again. I know you missed me. This is your weekly update that we update you every single Monday on how USMNT players did abroad on the previous week. We'll give you the possible transfer rumors, we'll give you the performance of each single player in the most summarized way possible. So please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our content. On Wednesday, we have the MLS Western Conference preview, so don't miss out on that. Lots of great guests as well. And don't forget to comment down below your USMNT player of the week abroad and what's your reason for him being the player of the week as well. With all that said, let's roll the episode and start with the transfer updates. All right, so possible transfers. The very first one I want to talk about is Conrad de la Fuente. Apparently, Barcelona is willing to sell him due to financial issues. There's no club set or anything. Barcelona just probably came out and said that they're willing to sell him due to their financial problems, all the debt they have. Now, the second transfer rumor I want to talk about is Weston McKinney. Juventus might also consider Weston McKinney due to financial problems. They would be okay for selling him for around 40 to $50 million, which is roughly twice the amount they paid for him. So listen up. Dorman has financial problems, Juventus, Barcelona. It seems like every single club has financial problems right now due to everything that happened last year. And this is the problem right now. All these clubs are going to have to sell these players to make money to survive or to keep it going and paying the salaries of the players they have. But if they're all selling the players, who the hell is going to buy them? Who's going to buy these players? That is the problem they're going to face. And we could see a major drop on the market value of the players because this essentially is a bubble. They have a bunch of debt. They try to sell the players, there's no buyers, there's just sellers, and then we have a crash. It, it seems like I'm talking about the stock market. Let, let's go to the performances of the players, let's skip that. All right, now player performances. Let's start with Christian Pulisic. On Wednesday, Pulisic started off at the bench for Chelsea after 2-0 victory over Porto for the Champions League quarterfinals. He came into the game at the final 25 minutes. I personally don't think he had that good of a game, but he didn't have a bad game either. He had an average game. He did almost score with a nice shot hitting the post. Now on Saturday, Christian Pulisic started and played a full 90 minutes for Chelsea at their 4-1 victory over Crystal Palace. He scored two goals, was named man of the match. The first goal was absolutely fantastic. A beautiful first touch and a blast of a finish. To me, the big positive here was him playing a full minutes. Yes, him playing a full minutes just shows he's fully healthy. And to me, that's the most important thing. The talent, the results, we know they will come. Form will be back. I was worried about him being healthy, and clearly he is. Congratulations, Christian Pulisic. I did say he was going to have a strong finish to the season. And there you have it, guys. Slowly picking it up. He scored three goals in the past two Premier League matches. Okay, now Mr. Party Boy, Weston McKinney. On Wednesday, McKinney was back with Juventus after serving suspension. He started off the bench for Juve at their 2-1 victory over Napoli. McKinney came in the game at the 69th minute. Now on Sunday, Weston McKinney started off the bench for Juve again at their 3-1 victory over Genoa. McKinney came in the 68th minute and scored at the 70th, the third goal of the match to get Juve the win with a very nice finish on a one-on-one -on -one situation with the goalkeeper. All right, now Giovanni Reina from Borussia Dortmund. On Tuesday, Gio Reina started off the bench for Dortmund at their 2-1 loss to Manchester City for the Champions League quarterfinals. Reina came into the game at the 63rd minute when the game was 1-0 Manchester City. And well, it ended, as I said, 2-1 Manchester City. On Saturday, Reina started for Dortmund and played 80 minutes, got an assist at their 3-2 victory over Stuttgart. His performance was very good, his work rate looked a lot better, confidence was doing very well, and he played very well as a right winger, playmaking as well, tucking in at times, playing wide. I am very happy for Gio Reyna this weekend. Very good performance. All right, now Serginho Dest from Barcelona. On Saturday, Dest started for Barcelona as a right wing back at El Clasico versus Real Madrid. Dest was not having the best performance. He somewhat struggled with Vini Jr. on the defensive end, and he was subbed off at halftime for Griezmann since Koeman was changing the three defender formation to four as he was trying to make a comeback from the 2-0 deficit. The game ended 2-1. Not the best performance by Dest, but hey, did you see any L3 player in this game? Because I did it. Dest was also named for the La Liga Team of the Month of March. So congratulations to Serginho Dest as well. Now Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig. On Saturday, Adams started for Leipzig at their 4-1 victory over Werder Bremen. He was subbed off at halftime when the match was already 3-0. Mostly due to precaution, due to a bruise on his back. He was fine and well, I think he's fine. And the injury was caused by a challenge with Josh Sargent. Okay, so 
that's just unfortunate, but I believe Tyler Adams is fine. And it's very important to point out that he has been showing that versatility matters. The fact that he can play in the midfield and as a right wing back is what's getting him all these starts. Now our goalkeepers abroad and there's no updates on our goalkeepers abroad. They haven't been playing. They're all mostly at the bench. I guess Josh Cohen has been playing for Maccabi Haifa, but I'm not going to talk about that very much. He's not really at the USMNT conversation. Zach Steffen's at the bench. Horvath Odunze is not playing for the senior squad. So I'm going to skip the goalkeepers and go to the center backs right away. Now let's go to center back position. I'm going to start with John Brooks. On Saturday, John Brooks started and played a full 90 minutes for Wolves. So we got their 4-3 loss to Eintracht Frankfurt. So dealing with Jovic and Andre Silva is not easy as they're the second best offense in the Bundesliga only behind Bayern. Now Brooks had an okay game and he was the highest rated center back in the field. More than the Eintracht Frankfurt center backs and more than the Wolfsburg center backs. It was just not a good day for both defenses. Now Chris Richards. Chris Richards was named rookie of the month for the month of March at the Bundesliga. So congratulations to Chris Richards. Now on his performance. I'll have to update you guys while I'm at work. So let's play me at work. All right, guys, quick update on Chris Richards. He played a full 90 minutes at Hoffenheim 0-0 draw with Bayern Leverkusen for the Bundesliga. I obviously was not able to watch the match, but I saw that he continues to play as a left center back on a three defender formation, and they held a clean sheet versus a very good Leverkusen team. So probably had a solid performance overall. That's the update on Chris Richards. I'm out. All right, now Eric Palmer Brown. On Saturday, Palmer Brown started and played a full 90 minutes for Austria Wien at their 1-0 loss to Hartburg at the Austrian League playoffs groups. Okay, now Matt Miazga from Underlesch. On Sunday, Miazga started and played a full 90 minutes for Underlesch at their big 2-1 victory over Club Bruges for the 33rd round of the Belgium League. Their league has 34 rounds, so there's one more to go. Okay, now Kick Piri. On Saturday, Kick played a full 90 minutes for 20 at their 1-0 loss to PEC for the Dutch League. Okay, now quick update on Justin Che. He's currently playing for Bayern 2. So Justin Che finally made his debut for Bayern 2. They play in Bundesliga 3. I know that's not anything crazy or special, but Justin Che is only 17. So it's very impressive that he's playing for that professional league at the Bundesliga 3 already where Terrence Boyd plays, for example. So congratulations to Justin Che. If you want to know more about him, we did make an interview with Justin Che, so don't miss out on that. You'll learn everything you need to know about Justin. Let's keep going to the video. Okay, so now Mark McKenzie from Genk. On Sunday, Mark McKenzie started off at the bench for Genk at their 4-0 victory over STVV from Chris Durkin. McKenzie came in at halftime when the game was already 3-0 and he helped Genk hold the clean sheet. He had a very solid performance. He also hit 91% of his passes accurately, which is a very underrated aspect of his game. Now Cameron Carter Vickers. On Saturday, Carter Vickers started and played a full 90 minutes for Burnmouth at their 4-1 victory over Coventry for the championship. Burnmouth is currently fighting for a playoff spot that would get them to fight for a spot at the EPL. All right, boys, we've reached the fullback position now, and I'm going to start with Anthony Robinson. On Saturday, Robinson started and played a full 90 minutes for Fulham at their 1-0 loss to Wolves with a sick goal by Adama Traore, by the way. Off topic, but I had to say it. Well, if you follow the channel for a while, you most certainly know that Fulham probably went with a three defender formation. Scott Parker went to three defender formation, which got Fulham to play him as a left wing back. And that's usually when he starts for Fulham. Okay, now Reggie Cannon. On Saturday, Cannon started for Boavista at their 3-3 draw with Rio Alve at Liga NOS. Cannon was subbed off at the 68th minute. For this game, he played mostly as a right wing back for Boa Vista as they went for three different formation. His overall performance was solid, good support on offense and okay defense. All right, now Matthew Alasunde from Rotherham. On Sunday, Matthew Alasunde started and played 73 minutes as a right wing back for Rotherham at their 0-0 draw with Huddersfield. All right, now Shaquille Moore. And see, I got his name right. I'm getting everyone's name right. Am I wrong? On Saturday, Moore started and played a full 90 minutes for Tenerife at their 1-0 victory over Sporting Gijon. Okay, now Brian Reynolds from Roma. On Sunday, Brian Reynolds started for Roma and played 75 minutes at their 1-0 victory over Bologna. He didn't play too well. His positioning was off. His first touch seemed off. He didn't seem too good in this game. But honestly, he's 19. It was his first start for Roma. I think it's okay to struggle. We do need him to have more options on the right back, even though I know we have many. We do need more options, and it's always good to have more. So I'm very excited for Brian Reynolds. Hopefully, he can continue to get minutes for Roma this season, gain experience, and improve. The talent is there. All right, now DeAndre Yedlin from Galatasaray. On Saturday, Yedlin started for Galatasaray and played just 28 minutes at their 1-1 draw. He was subbed off early due to an ankle injury. All right, all right, we got an update on DeAndre Yedlin. He's actually did injure his ankle pretty badly. It affected the ligaments apparently, and he will be out for roughly three weeks. That is the new update. We didn't have it at the time of the first recording. Since we got it now, I decided to update you guys. Now we're at the midfielders, and I'm going to start with Yunus Musa. And if you guys made it this far to the video, 
please make sure to hit the like button. It really helps the channel. If you truly appreciate this content, this is the best way to support us by hitting the like button and commenting down below your player of the week and sharing the content as well in Reddit, Facebook, whatever, anyone, any of the USMNT fans that we can get. But let's go to Yunus Musa. On Sunday, Yunus Musa started off the bench for Valencia and came in the 63rd minute as they were down 2-1 and trying to make a comeback. The game ended 2-2, by the way. Musa got a yellow card. He looked a little off in his game. He didn't have the best game he had all season, but it was good to see him get more minutes rather than coming into the 89th minute as he had in the previous matches. Okay, Chris Durkin. On Tuesday, April 6th, Chris Durkin started off the bench for STVV and came in the 37th minute to help them get a 4-2 victory over Waslin Bavadin. Now on Sunday, he started off the bench again at their 4-0 loss to Genk. But then he also came in the 34th minute again after Genk was up 2-0. It's very weird that he was at the bench two games and came in on the 30s, like halfway through the first half. But it is what it is. Chris Durkin came in both and got a lot of minutes. That's what we like to see. A quick update on Johnny Cardoso. Internacional did not play this week and they play again on the 14th, April 14th for the state tournament. So there's no updates on him in regards to performance, just that he'll be back with the team April 14th. All right, Brandon Harrison. On Sunday, Brandon Harrison starred and played 85 minutes for RB Salzburg at their 3-0 victory over Rapid Wien. He had an average performance in this game, but not bad by any means. It's just that he got us used to all these amazing performances the past month, so this performance just looked pretty average. Okay, now Taylor Booth. On Saturday, Booth started off the bench for Poulton at their 1-0 loss to Altash for the Austrian League. Booth came into the game at halftime when the game was still 0-0. All right, now Julian Green. Firth did not play this weekend. They returned to the Bundesliga this Friday, April 16th. So as expected, Green didn't play because they didn't play and he's expected to start this Friday. All right, now Luca De La Torre, one of the most underrated players in the USMNT poll. On Saturday, Luca De La Torre started for Heracles and played 79 minutes at their 4-0 victory over Willen 2. De La Torre was also named for Team of the Month at the Dutch League. Big W for Luca De La Torre. He continues to impress, and I think a big move could come this summer. Not to an elite team, but to a top five league. All right, now Dwayne Holmes. On Tuesday, April 6th, Dwayne Holmes started and played 53 minutes at Hutter Fields. 7-0 loss to Norwich. When he left the game, the game was already 5-0, so there's not much more to talk about here. Now on Saturday, they decided to play defense, so Hutter Field tied Rotterdam 0-0, and Dwayne Holmes started and played 82 minutes. How do you go from allowing seven goals in one game and no goals in the other game? I don't know. Let's let's go to the forwards. All right, we've reached the forwards and let's start with Tim Weah. On Friday, Tim Weah started off the bench for Lille at their 2-0 win over Mertz. Weah came into the game at the 75th minute. So Jonathan Davis is expected to miss more time, so Tim Weah's minutes will probably ramp up the next few weeks. Now Tim Weah is the most valuable USA center forward, if you consider him a center forward, obviously. To me, he's more of a winger. His current market value is 13.2 million. That's just a new update. If you consider him a center forward, that's what it is. I still think he's a winger. All right, Matthew Hoppy. On Sunday, Matthew Hoppy started off the bench for Schalke at their 1-0 victory over Augsburg. They somehow won. Schalke finally won. And Matthew Hoppy was at the bench. He came into the game at the very end. Didn't do much. But I'm just impressed. They got their second win this season. Congratulations, Schalke. You're still relegated. A quick update on Folarin Balogun, which we made a video about him as well if you want to learn more about him. But let me give you an update real quick. According to The Athletic, Balogun did renew his contract for Arsenal for four more seasons. With that said, maybe we will see him get some minutes towards the end of this season. Him staying in England, staying in Arsenal does not help the USMNT odds of recruiting him. It doesn't hurt it by any means, but it definitely doesn't help as he's going to be in England during this time. But we'll see. We'll see if Arsenal loan him out next season. I don't know. But he renewed it. I don't think it was the smartest move. But it is what it is. All right, now Alex Maiten. On Sunday, Maiten started for Nottingham Forest and played 88 minutes at their 0-0 drop with Bristol City. Do you guys want us to make a player bio video about Alex Mighton so you guys can learn more about him? If you do, please comment that down below saying please make the Alex Mighton video and we'll do a player bio where we learn about his background, his playing style, stats, everything. You know, the player bio videos we always do. Okay, Linden Goosh. On Saturday, Goosh started and played 62 minutes for Sunderland as a right midfielder on a 3-4-3 formation at their 2-1 loss to Charlton. Now my boy, Daryl DK, that continues to tear up at Barnsley. And pardon my French. On Saturday, DK started and played a full 90 minutes for Barnsley at their 2-0 win over Middlesbrough. DK scored Barnsley's second goal at the match, had another solid performance, just had the same issues as always with his first touch, but overall he had a fantastic match once again and scored a goal once again. 
Honestly, I can't wait for Orlando City to just bring Daryl DK back and become the most hated club in the MLS, by the USMNT fans at least. Okay, so Nicolas Joachini. On Saturday, Joachini started and played a full 90 minutes as a left winger for Cain at their 3-1 loss to Grenoble for the French second division. His performance was not very good. All right, now Josh Sargent for Werder Bremen. On Saturday, Sargent started and played 83 minutes for Bremen at their 4-1 loss to Leipzig. Sargent did okay. Honestly, the team does not help that much. His movement was fine. He didn't do bad. It's just very hard for him to perform in this team. And I just hope he makes a move next season or Werder Bremen completely changes his team, coaching staff, players. It's very hard to watch Sargent play for such a crap team. He's very underrated, very good player, very good defensive stat, very good offense as well. Just the stats don't show it. But let's just keep going with the video. I can make a whole video showing why Josh Sargent is underrated if you guys just let me know. All right, now Siabachu. On Thursday, Siabachu started off the bench for Young Boys at their 4-1 loss to Galen for the Swiss Cup. Siabachu came into the game at the 78th minute. Now on Sunday, Siabachu started, played 81 minutes for Young Boys at their 2-0 win over Galen. Yes, the same opponent they lost 4-1 a few days back. Now this time for the Swiss League. Young Boys currently leads the league by 22 points ahead of the second place team. Tyler Boyd. On Wednesday, Boyd started for Sivaspor, played 71 minutes, scored two goals at their 4-2 victory over Antaliaspor. Now on Sunday, Boyd started again, played 67 minutes for Sivaspor at their 3-1 win over Konyaspor. What's with the Turkish teams and all these Yaspor names? Now Boyd has been playing very well, but let's not forget, it is the Turkish League. With all that said, the Turkish League is not that strong, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tyler Boyd goes to the Gold Cup. I don't think we'll see him in the Nations League. I think we'll see Tyler Boyd in the Gold Cup if he's healthy. Now, Haji Wright. On Sunday, Haji Wright started for Sunderjeski at their 3-2 loss to Horsens for the Danish League relegation playoffs group. Wright scored a goal and played a full 90 minutes. All right, now Emmanuel Sabi. On Friday, Sabi started, played 68 minutes for Odense at their 1-0 loss to Vergele for the Danish League relegation group. And Sabi did not really have a good performance. All right, guys, if you've made it this far in the video, please make sure to hit that like button as it truly helps the channel and the notification bell that helps you get notified when you have a video. We have the MLS Western Conference preview coming up on Wednesday with a lot of great guests, including Pete from 11 Yanks. With all that said, let me do one thing before we go. Let me go through the list of players that we normally cover but weren't active or didn't play as much this week. And I'll start right away with Zach Steffen, CJ Dos Santos, Odunze, Ethan Horvath, Henry Wingo, Joe Scali, Richie Ledesma that's recovering from his ACL surgery is expected to be back next season. Owen Otasawi, Christian Kapis, Sebastian Salcedo, Sebastian Soto, and Yuli Llanes. I want to thank you all very much for watching guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. Make sure to hit the like button and don't miss our MLS live streams. I want to thank you all very much for the support. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.